So I got to tell you, check out this uh, New Hampshire Free State Project. Check out these poor bastards in Greenfield, Massachusetts, my hometown, who were busted for videoing the police doing their jobs, and I guess doing their jobs badly. And I got to tell you, I love Greenfield, Massachusetts. Love the police there, but I'm uh, probably siding with the Free State people. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Pete. It's August 3rd. I'm in Danbury, Connecticut. And real briefly, wanted to share a little bit about the experience that uh, myself and my colleague and friend Adam Miller have had down in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Uh, due to time constraints, won't be able to touch on everything here. So I encourage you to go to copblock.org slash Greenfield to read the pretty thorough overview that Adam and I wrote uh, um, almost a month ago now. So very briefly, uh, some background, and then I'm going to touch on uh, what's happened the past week or so. Um, on July 1st, Adam and I drove from New Hampshire to Greenfield to bail a friend out of jail uh, who's being held at the Franklin County Jail. Uh, so we drove down there, we parked, uh, we walked into the jail, and we're filming, as we always do, thanks to our involvement with coplock.org and libertyontour.com. We're both wearing coplock.org t-shirts, uh, which we had just gotten in the mail. We told the man behind the desk we were there to bail out our friend. He said he'd facilitate that, but he, we first needed to turn off our cameras. Uh, I pointed out that there were... Though there were signs on the walls uh, stating that cell phone use was prohibited, there wasn't anything about filming. I also picked up this uh, visitor's expectations and rules put out by the uh, Franklin County Sheriff's Office. And again, there's nothing in here um, that touches on filming, let alone says filming is, is uh, not allowed. Uh, we also pointed out the double standard, the fact that there were multiple cameras in the ceiling of the jail, and so they were filming us, but we couldn't film them, and you know they purport to work for us. so. Um, after maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, a supervisor was strolling by, Adam grabbed him, explained the situation to him, and he told the guy behind the desk, hey, go ahead, uh, let them film, take their money, get, get their friend, and get them out of here. So uh, the, the guy behind the desk started to do that, but we told him uh, we were unsure how much the bail was initially, 2500 or 500 We were told it was 500 so we told him we'd be right back, we just had to go get the money out. We left the jail and walked a few blocks back to Marv so I could get my driver's license. Uh, which was needed to complete the paperwork. And then we were going to go to the grocery store so I could use the ATM to take some money out. Uh, went in the parking lot, walking to the grocery store. Uh, Greenfield Police Department squad car pulled up and stopped. Uh, an officer later identified as Todd M. Dodge, you know, asked us from the window if we planned on going back up there. Adam said yes, but my response was, to where? And then he got out of his car, started walking towards us. We were both filming at the time, and um, he asked us, uh, uh, some other questions. He asked us if we were filming, and I just said, hey, are we being detained? And he said no, so we just left the scene and went inside the grocery store. Uh, I took the money out, we walked out, uh, went back to the jail. Uh, we were told Then we were told by the man be behind the, the desk that we could not film, so I asked him what has happened in the 10 to 15 minutes uh, since we left when we were given, uh, when we were told that we could film. So we had some back and forth there. Soon, uh, soon Dodge showed up, and um, a couple other deputies from the jail uh, were talking to us in the lobby. So maybe after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, Adam said, "Hey, let's just should we just go outside on the sidewalk and talk?" So it's uh, you know we're not in the lobby. So everyone agreed. We went outside, and then Dodge told us pretty much right away that if we did not shut off our cameras, uh, we would be arrested for filming. Um, you know, so I was like, "Well, first we were told we could film in the lobby, then we couldn't. Then we were told we could film on the sidewalk, and now we can't." And I'm and so I, I'm just trying to understand. We're trying to understand what's going on here. And he told us, "Well, you guys can go across the street and film, but you can't film here. You're going to be arrested for trespassing." So uh, neither Adam nor I uh, stopped filming. Um, and so Dodge uh, grabbed Adam's arm. Uh, he was filming, twisted it back, took his camera. Another uh, deputy there assisted him. Um, a couple. Adam went limp, went passive. They ended up dragging him to a squad car. Uh, the deputies there did the same thing to me, uh, the uh, people from the jail, I should say, and then uh, uh, I went limp, I was passive, so three um, men carried me to another squad car, drove us to the jail, um, it was, that was about 7 o'clock at night, uh, so then we went through intake, you know, the whole time Adam and I were asking them questions, and um, um, Dodge uh, was trying to figure out who owned the RV, he threatened to break the RV's window to get inside, they later found my keys on my person and used those to get inside, and we, uh, we found out uh, from a police report that we later obtained and from the tow truck operator that the RV was towed from its location on the curb to the Greenfield Police Department parking lot for a more extensive search, uh, you know, where they uh, 
essentially trashed it. So again, the RV was not involved in the arrest at all. It was a few blocks away. Um, there was no signs or painted curb or anything else that would cause us to think that we could not park there. No warrant was ever obtained to go into the RV. And uh, you know, this is not just our vehicle; it's our home. And this is this is where we live. And actually, according to the uh, motor vehicle inventory report that I got yesterday from the DA, uh, a Lieutenant William Gordon wrote that uh, during the motor vehicle search, I located a metal box of ammo containing boxes of 40 cal ammunition in the rear of the RV. I also found anarchist papers. Finding weapons and anarchist papers, from my training and experience, I know to be more cautious about potential explosive and other booby traps, so I finished the inventory search at the station. Really? Come on. We're about peace. At the jail, um, we were put into separate cages. We weren't ever told of our charges. We weren't allowed to make a phone call. Uh, we weren't read our rights, which I'm told violates um, Chapter 263 of Rights of Persons Accused of Crime to be told of their charges. So uh, these statutes uh, these guys purport to enforce uh, are just being ignored. So, you know, to reiterate, we weren't told of our charges. We weren't, weren't allowed to make a phone call. We weren't given blankets. We were kept there overnight. It was really cold. We were banging on the door saying, hey, 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 can we get some blankets? And finally, the uh, a dispatcher um who had an intercom in the ceiling told us, uh, we'll, I'll send someone down there. I'm the only person here right now. So an hour or so later, uh, another officer, Greenfield Police Department officer arrived. Told, I told him what was going on. He said, all right, if your story checks out that you haven't made a call, uh, I'll, I'll, make, I'll go ahead and let you, let you make a call. He went to check the call log. I heard him on the phone, and then he disappeared. Never heard from him, so we never got to make our phone call. Um, and the same dispatcher, when Adam was walking around, we were trying to stay warm. We were trying to like do push-ups, and you know we couldn't sleep at all. Really, so um, at one point the dispatcher told Adam, like, uh, even rodents get used to their environments, essentially telling Adam that he was a, a rodent. Um, so anyway, these guys didn't have any respect for us. Uh, that night, uh, our friends, we're fortunate, our friends uh, donated a few thousand dollars for our bail, made a lot of phone calls to the police department and jail to find out about our status. And Adam and I were in the dark about this because no one told us what happened, was, was what was going on. Our cages, you know, they had uh, a concrete bed, essentially, and then stainless steel toilet. So, needless to say, it was really cold in there that night. Uh, the next day, we were brought to court. Uh, we told Dodge of our night, and he laughed about it. Um, through our court assigned lawyers for that proceeding, we were informed of our charges. Uh, Adam was charged with um, a misdemeanor resisting arrest, a misdemeanor trespassing, a felony unlawful wiretapping, and I was charged with all three of those, and in addition, uh, misdemeanor VIN manipulation. They claimed that the VIN number on the RV had been manipulated, which then gave them um, the right to go inside and, and check, um, when in fact there is no VIN number on the dash, and our curtains were closed, so they couldn't even see if there were a VIN number on the dash at all. So again, this this is an RV. It's different than a regular vehicle. There's not a plate on the front that shows the VIN number. Um, and they also charged me with a felony, possession of firearm slash ammo, because they, they allege that they found some uh, uh, some 40 caliber rounds um, in the RV, and I don't have a firearm identification card in Massachusetts, which they which they say therefore I, I'm charged with a felony. So anyway, uh, despite all those, we were both released on our own recognizance. Uh, our cameras and phones were kept by Dodge and the Greenfield Police Department. Um, the next day, uh, July 3rd, uh, the Recorder, which is the local Greenfield paper, published a story about us. Um, full of misinformation, including uh, a statement that said there were swastikas in this RV, uh, which is just ridiculous. Also, we were fortunate a lot of other uh, news outlets, such as Photography's Not a Crime, Reasons Hit and Run, Freekeen.com, and The Examiner covered our story, uh, as did Penn Jillette. Real quickly, it's worth noting that in 2007, another individual, uh, Emily Payton was arrested in Greenfield for much of the same offenses, uh, trespass, disorderly conduct, and unlawful wiretapping. And Greenfield Police Captain John Newton is quoted in the local paper about that as stating, she was not obvious about her recording. So he's saying she was arrested because she was concealing her camera. Um, but Adam and I, again, we were very visible about a recording. Our cop locked over t-shirts have a cop with a video camera pointed at him. So, uh, and her charges ended up being dropped. This past Thursday, July 29th, Adam was arraigned. I don't think he said one word the entire uh, time he was up there, but 